Greetings ladies and gents, and welcome to today's Reddit series video from the subreddit HFY called Flintstone Chapter 29 Behold, written by some guy named Ted. My return to consciousness was sudden and blinding. I threw my arms up to block the stabbing light, rolling to my side to avoid it. Somewhere in the middle of that movement, I realized that since the light was hurting me, I could see, I could see. My hands flew immediately to my face, feeling around at the miracle that had occurred. After confirming my eyes were actually there, and this was not a fanciful dream, I cautiously opened them again. The light hurt, but it wasn't the stabbing pain anymore from before. I blinked rapidly, trying to adjust my eyes to the light. While they adjusted, my surroundings slowly came into view. Out of the blurry mass came a bed, lumps in the blanket where my legs lay. Beyond that was a blank white wall, unadorned with decoration or color. It was the most beautiful thing that I'd ever seen. The subtle shade variations, where the paint had plied thicker and surrounding areas, the spidery cracks and the flakes spread across the wall, and the slight wave and the contour of the wall all captured my eyes, holding them with the sheer intensity of appearance. After staring at the wall for what felt like years, I realized that I was staring at a wall and turned my attention to other things. To the left, a bank of instruments and machines hummed against the wall, wires and tubes leading to my bed. To my right, a door with a bank of windows, I stared at everything in wonder, trying to take it all in. It wasn't every day that you got your sight back. With the surprise of suddenly regaining vision, I started to breathe heavier and quicker as the excitement got to me. I finally realized that my chest should have been excruciating pain only after ten minutes. Cautiously reaching up and pushing against my ribs, I was delighted to feel no pain. It seemed my father, if it was my father, I was not entirely convinced, had healed all my injuries. I laughed with joy, exhilarated by the prospect. The deep laugh reached down to my toes, shaking my entire body. I leapt out of the bed, moving freely for the first time in a week, and I ran through the room, shouting at the top of my voice. I ran, and I skipped, and I jumped my way around the small room, from floor to bed to floor again, body flooding with energy. A loud gasp from the door shook me as a manic dance. Spinning around, I saw the nurse begin to crumble to the ground, presumably from the shock of seeing the formerly bedridden blind patient leaping about his room. Not wanting to cause a concussion, I bounded across the room and caught her before she hit the ground. It must have only been a slight fainting spell, because the nurse came too as I set her back to her feet. No, oh, thank you, she said, a voice light trill that reminded me of a songbird. I don't know what came over me. I shrugged. I don't mean to startle you, but I was overjoyed to find out that I'd been healed. I went a bit crazy. She shook her head. It wasn't the mad dancing that startled me. Lifting a shaky finger, the nurse pointed at my face. It was your eyes. I shrugged, luxuriating in the cessation of freely moving my chest and arms, before I could reply that noticed the nurse had a faint scar on her scaly cheek. The pale white line amongst the green, the sight, was something very ordinary, but I was unexpectedly entranced by it. Nat, she said, pointing again, your eyes get all weird when you do that. Weird? Since when did medical professionals refer to something as weird? So I asked her as much. Weird? What do you mean? Her face gained a critical look before she answered. Really, really intense, but that's not really enough to describe it. If I didn't know better, I'd say that it flashed for a moment, truly flashing like a light. That was certainly a strange way to describe someone's eyes. Okay, I said slowly. Yes, I'd say that's a little weird. The nurse jumped. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult or offend you. It's just, you startled me. I waved my hand. It's fine. She visibly sagged with relief. 
Now that we've got that out of the way, I need to ask you something. I lifted my eyebrow. Now that I had my eyes back, it felt normal again and said, Ask away. How in the world did you go from bedridden to fully healed in a few hours? Not to mention you regrew your eyes. Her voice climbed at the end, highlighting the fact that I was a medical miracle. Despite the fact that I knew exactly why, I hesitated while answering. Most people didn't believe in elder beings or thought them to be a myth. And how was I supposed to explain that I wasn't actually a full Jahan, but rather a jahan Aldebrine hybrid? No, best to feign ignorance. I... I don't know, I said, trying my best to sound confused. I, I just woke up and I could see. That was not an entirely a lie. Hmm, we're going to have to see the Dr. Bahones. When Bahone saw me, he had much the same reaction as the nurse, shock followed by disbelief. You would think the top doctor in the sector's top hospital, he'd be accustomed to seeing strange things, but apparently not. After his initial shock was worn off, Bahone's put me through a vast number of tests, scans, and more tests. At the end of it, he was left scratching his head. I have no idea how this happened, he confessed. There is nothing abnormal about any of the tests other than the obvious. From what I can determine, you just woke up fully healed. The confused expression on his face was almost enough for me to tell him what really happened. But I still felt it was best to remain silent about the whole thing. There's nothing that would suggest that caused this. Nothing strange at all, I asked. Strange? Yes. A great many things are strange. For one, your eyesight is the best I've ever seen. I know Jahan tend to have excellent eyesight to begin with, but you're all exceptional even for a Jahan. And you seem to have gained a good deal of weight, most of which seems to be muscle. But for the love of Ethera, well, I have no idea how that came to be. I'd like to keep you under observation for a while to see if there is any negatives that come from this. I really didn't want to be in the hospital any longer. Do you happen to know when Clint is returning? I'll be leaving with him. I couldn't fly a ship out to wherever he was. The Rebellion didn't nearly have enough ships to spare, nor did I know where to find him. Bohone shook his head. I have no idea. You could try contacting him through the communications room in the military setup, though. I thought that was an excellent idea. After gathering directions, I made my way to the room and instructed the operator to contact the Hand of War. He gave to me for a moment before I barked at him to do his job. It was nearly twenty minutes later when he's made contact after jumping from relay to relay, tracking down the location of the Hand of War. It wasn't easy to contact a special forces ship operating in enemy territory, but after the necessary precautions were made and the right hoops jumped through, the familiar face of Kokek appeared on the screen. As an unofficial communications officer of the bandits, Kokek handled nearly everything that came through the bandits' com. The look of shock on his face was priceless. I held up my hand, one finger extended. Save it, yes, it is a miracle. No, you're not dreaming. Could you get Clint for me? Nodding wordlessly, Kokek disappeared for several minutes. When he returned, it was with a great deal of noise, namely the pounding of feet as a being of generous heft bounded across the floor. The wild eyes and face of Clint Stone blinked into the view of the screen, mouth stretched wide in a toothy grin. Holy crap, Kokek wasn't kidding. You really are, Panther. Yeah, I guess so, I said to Glint, and he laughed. And so calm about it, I see. How is this possible? he asked. I knew, and I didn't intend to tell Glint, but not while there were others who could hear. I wasn't calm earlier, believe me, and I don't really know. I just woke up like this. Glint's mouth opened and closed rapidly as his brow furrowed. Finally, he asked, what now? Are you being discharged from the hospital, or... Bones wants to keep me under observation, but yes. Thence a ready wide grin grew even wider. Well, we'll come and get you. His grin faded a little, but that'll be in a few days. We've got to take care of, um, 
things first. I understood. That's fine. Besides, a little more time here, I would be able to talk to Maluxi again. Sir, the operator said nervously, we've got to cut the line soon. Blint looked through the screen. You best stay out of trouble, Tedex. I fully intend to hug you half to death when I see you, and I can't do that if you're injured. I grinned and nodded. I think I can manage that, I said as the screen cut to black. End of chapter and end of book two. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting, and that may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or, if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support is very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.